territory. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Dirt Gear TV. It's a couple days after Thanksgiving. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did, I ate way too much food. And today is a gorgeous day. It is 76 degrees out, sunny and breezy here in beautiful Florida. And all of the slingshots and all the ATVs are out in force today. It'll probably stay like this for another month or so before it really starts to get cold, cold. And when I say cold, for us, cold is like the 50s at night. But uh, I'm curious, what is it like in the part of the country where you're at? So leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of weather you're having. So today's gonna be a really cool day. We're gonna be looking at our tuning table and seeing what we can do to kind of squeeze a little bit of added performance out of the tune of this buggy. So the main thing that really I'm gonna be focusing on today that I wanna get properly dialed in is gonna be our fuel table, other, otherwise known as the volumetric efficiency table. That's gonna be your primary tool, whether you're using Tuner Studio or HP Tuners or whatever you're using, they're all gonna have some type of fuel uh, table like that that you're gonna to have to manually program or use some kind of auto-tune program. Now, in my case, I have the paid version of Tuner Studio. So this is gonna be a little bit different if you have the unpaid version of Tuner Studio, but it's really not gonna be that much different. The basics are gonna be the same. The fuel table is all gonna perform the same way, the acceleration enrichments. And the one main difference between what I'm gonna be doing today, and if you do not have the paid version, is that I have the added advantage of live auto-tune. So what I can do is I can start the buggy, and then put it into tuning, live tuning mode. And basically, um, Tuner Studio will go in there and it will actively adjust my fuel table according to what my programmed AFR table is set to. So let's assume for simplicity's sake, you wanted your entire table to be 14.7. Whether you're at 6,000 RPM, whether you're at 1,000 RPM, you just want it to always run at 14.7. You can put that across the entire table as that 14.7. Then when you go into your VE table, your volume efficiency table, if you use an auto-tune feature, it will, no matter what your wideband is reading, what it'll do is it'll adjust and it'll put more fuel in to bring that AFR needle down to that 14.7 point that you have programmed into your table. We're definitely losing a lot of power from between about 5,500 to about 6,500. The engine's really struggling to get up to that rev range. And that's probably because we've got too much fuel on the top end. But we're gonna look at that together once we get out to the trails and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna use uh, the live tune version of Tuner Studio to analyze the table and get a better tune going. So if you are curious at all about tuning or even just wanna see how much more performance we can get out of this engine, stick around guys, because we're gonna be working on that together. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we're here at the trails. This is our initial tune. Now this is our VE fuel table. This is the auto start tune. So you can see our air fuel here, engine map, uh, pressure, speed, RPM, and so forth. So I'm just gonna start the auto tune. And so literally as this thing sits and just idles away, what it's doing is it's pulling information from our AFR table. So here's how I have my AFR table set up. You can see at this low RPM range, I've got it running about 14.7, which is stoichiometric. I've got it a little bit leaner down here uh, at cruise RPM. That's just to kind of keep low load and so forth. And as we start to accelerate, this will continue to drop lower and lower. At about 5100, this drops as low as 12.3. So basically what this is doing, this auto-tune feature, is as you can see, it's adding fuel in to make sure that our AFR ratio is exactly where I set it to in the table. So it's gonna run and I'm just gonna kind of give it some gas and it's gonna rev it a little bit as it makes adjustments. Anything that you see in red on the screen means that it's pulling fuel out of it. It's leaning those cells. Anything that's blue means it's adding more fuel. fuel out this tells us how much of a change is being made
All right, guys, so I got the laptop hooked up. All right, so that's gonna be tuning while we hit the trails. So this is currently live analyzing our data, which is nice because now we're under load. We're gonna do a second gear pull here, so we're gonna go under light or heavy load low RPM to get some of this table dialed in here. We're going to do that a few times. Get as much data captured as we can. You can see it's making adjustments. much fuel because I feel it bogging. You either have too little or too much and I can't really see way too much. So it's pulling fuel out as we go. here we're gonna have a few shots at this before we get in trouble so we're going to start our auto tune it one more time we'll capture this data I don't know how many more of these pulls I can handle my adrenaline's pretty high let's do another pull Okay, so we've had our fun. We put a little bit of tune in it. Our laptop died. And now at this point, we're gonna have some fun. Yeah, that definitely feels like 80 horsepower now. Maybe more. All right. Good. So, that was effective. Down here. Oh, the 
got it. Dude. Yo, they got it all walled off. That sucks, because that looks like fun. All right, let's see if we can find a way around these guys. There's some cool stuff over here. ourselves. I think we can make it up that. Even I know that there are limitations to the buggy. Oh, this is sweet, guys. Yo, this is sick. Look at all this donut territory. about seating in these new brake pads but after today oh ouch I'm not worried about that one bit I beat the tar out of this thing today I'm sure these brake pads have had plenty of brake yet so if it could use anything it could probably use some stronger brakes in a tiny little buggy start hitting speeds that previously you were capable of now even though this thing's fast it's not really it's really not designed for high speed it's kind of a good you wouldn't know it from where you guys are sitting or from looking at it from the outside but this thing is really good on slow technical Rudy, steep stuff. It climbs really well, all things considered. What I mean by all things is that it's only two-wheel drive with uh, without posi traction. So my point is that these tires, they're only 12-inch rims. They've got a lot of tread, a lot of sidewall on these tires, which is why we get going so 
sideways like that from time to time. That and the fact that I like to keep my tire pressure pretty low so it doesn't beat the tar out of me. I will have to work on the suspension a bit. Well guys, it's getting dark, I'm heading back. I've been beating on this thing hard. I'm getting a little, little motion sick at this point from this thing kicking my butt. It's been a rough ride today. So we're gonna head back. We're gonna review the logs and everything. Well, I'm gonna review the logs and I'll come back next time with an even stronger tune in it. I appreciate you guys following along with the buggy project. This thing's only gonna continue to get better and better. So keep watching the videos. If you haven't, subscribe to the channel. We are Dirt Gear TV. We've got more better projects coming at you uh, in the near future. Thanks for watching Dirt Gear TV, guys.